Valve wants to get into the home console game, Intel's got some reservations about their new shareholder, and Nvidia's next generation of GPUs seems to be a pretty big overhaul. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday. August 26th, 2025. And we're gonna start with the new Steam machines that are allegedly on their way out to the consumer market. Valve Fremont is the name of the chip that is expected to be debuted into this new home console-esque device that we're anticipating from the Steam makers. This is not the first time that we've heard of Valve Fremont. It's kind of been in the rumblings for a while, but now we have some benchmarks that are apparently coming out from this device. And it's a, a mixed bag of choices from Valve here when it comes to what exactly this thing is going to be, who it's actually gonna be for. Are they targeting some sort of Steam Deck-like thing that you plug into your TV? Or is this gonna be a standalone PC that they're just gonna sell as like a pre-built box? It's not quite clear, but according to the specs, it looks like it's gonna be a six core Zen 4 CPU. So you're looking at something like a Ryzen 5 7600, except for that it's based on the mobile sector. So it's gonna be a more equivalent to something that's found in a lot laptop, but then it's not using the integrated GPU so far as we're aware, but rather a RX 7600 class GPU, not the mobile version of that, but rather the desktop version of that, which gives it eight gigabytes of VRAM. However, in the benchmarking, it's not quite clear if it has RAM beyond that. It likely should, but according to the details that we're seeing, eight gigabytes of memory is all that it has, especially since it's DDR5, not GDDR5, which puts it in a really weird place. So that that Zen 4 core setup is better than what's in the Steam Deck. It's better than what's in the PlayStation 5 or PlayStation 5 Pro. It's two generations newer, which should theoretically make it significantly faster. In fact, the benchmarks show that it's about double what's in the Steam Deck right now. However, there are some other confusions with that, such as the RDNA 3 GPU is technically newer in generation than what's in the PlayStation 5. It could be on par with what's in that, but it's kind of less than what's in the PS5 Pro. So it's kind of a mixed bag in terms of its total set up, but then also the minimal amount of RAM it has, especially if it's sharing it between the CPU and GPU. I don't see that necessarily going well, especially since the Steam Deck already has 16 gigs. Why would they reduce that to put that into like a console-like device? And then on top of that, the benchmark was running Windows 11. So it's not necessarily looking like this will be a Steam OS device, even though in theory, that's what all of the previous rumors have been pointing to is that this is supposed to be a new version of some sort of Steam machine, especially since Valve's Proton has now passed its seventh anniversary, claiming that it has 26,000 playable titles with more than 21,000 being playable on the Steam OS and Steam Deck. This is a big change from back when Valve originally did Steam Machines with less support for what was going on in Steam OS. So it's kind of a weird mixed bag. I would hope that if they actually release this, there's gonna be more shared RAM for the CPU and GPU. I hope that it's actually gonna be running Steam OS and that it's at a respectable price point because I could see them competing in the home console space, especially considering how popular the Steam Deck has actually been. But I think with the current hardware choices, it'll be a little bit of a weird situation. Let me know what you think of the current Valve Fremont setup. What do you uh, want out of a Steam home box if you were gonna suggest one? Let me know down below in those comments while I let you know about a new feature coming to Windows 11 that's gonna be using the link to phone app that currently is available on the operating system. And that is going to be allowing you to continue things from your Android app into your PC. So this isn't something necessarily new if you've been using the Apple ecosystem, but it's gonna be helpful if you're on Windows 11 and currently have an Android device. Right now, the limited rollout is only with Spotify, but if you're listening to something on Spotify, you can resume it on your PC. Or if you don't have the app downloaded, it'll search that for you and get it installed from the Microsoft Store in case you want to. So the link to Windows app that's used on the phones is having some robust features being implemented, kind of creating a new ecosystem slash less of a walled garden that can be comparable to what all the intricacies of synchronicity that the Apple iDevice setup has. So I, I'm appreciative of this. I would like to see this rolled out to more than just Spotify, but more apps that uh, are usable on a daily basis, but it's got to start somewhere. It's currently in the dev and beta builds, and we'll have to see if other developers choose to support this moving forward. And I'm gonna choose to support Reese moving forward, because he's gonna move forward your wallet. 
and better money situation. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet, and I'll jump straight into them. If you've ever wanted to try an Alice Layout keyboard, but you've been scared of the price, you can grab the Keychron Q8 for a very nice price of $69.99. But then we have this Western Digital SN7100 NVMe M.2 SSD with the four terabyte version going for $209.99, making it $60 off. And then lastly, we have this gorgeous MSI 27 inch 1440p 240 hertz QD OLED gaming monitor for $499.99, making it $100 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it turns out that uh, the US government buying 10% of Intel's shares is not necessarily as good of a deal as they were making it seem initially, because despite the fact that the US government is completing this deal, Intel had to file a Form 8K with the SEC to kind of indicate exactly what's going on with this deal, talking about everything related to their securities and exchange setup. And it doesn't paint quite as rosy a picture as things have been publicly stated by the CEO or the president of the United States. So some of the warnings that Intel gives in this document include that there could be adverse reactions from investors, employees, customers, suppliers, other business or commercial partners, foreign governments, or competitors. And that because of the change in the political landscape, things involved in the deal right now actually might be null and void moving forward. And that because they're now going to be significantly owned by the US government. It could create a poor sentiment for Intel, making it more difficult for them moving forward. But also with that foreign governments or competitor situation is something that's kind of forefront on Intel's mind, considering that 76% of their revenue came from outside of the United States last year, and over a quarter of that happened to be from China directly, who has already espoused some issues that they're having with NVIDIA, accusing them of implementing backdoors into their chips and kind of creating a negative situation in that front. So Intel kind of indicating that this isn't all rosy. They may potentially suffer some revenue hits due to this new purchase. And they also disclose that the hundreds of millions of shares of of common stock that the US government is purchasing is actually diluting current existing shareholders. This is not being taken from the current pool, but rather new stock is being issued specifically for this purchase and it was at a discount to the current market price. So there's a lot going on in this 8K form, but it does espouse that despite the Intel CEO saying that he's super happy to partner with the US government, there are some intricacies in the deal that could potentially hinder Intel's progress in the near future when it comes to moving forward, which is also what NVIDIA is doing because the CEO Jensen Wong giving an interview indicating that Rubin, which is going to be the code name for their next generation of GPUs, has entered trial production. So currently Rubin has six distinct chips that are being submitted to TSMC for them to start working on actually developing this. And it's supposed to be a much bigger upgrade than what we saw with the RTX 50 series from the RTX 40 series. Because despite the number going up on the name of the GPU, there wasn't much that changed under the hood both architecturally as well as process node wise, it was mostly just kind of a side grade in terms of everything when it comes to producing the GPUs. Rubin is supposed to be the exact opposite of that. It's supposed to be a platform level upgrade, which means that they're changing essentially everything and it's gonna be on TSMC's N3P process, hopefully making it more power efficient and better at limiting itself in terms of uh, the amount of juice that you get per watt. So Nvidia has kind of already given us a hint of what we can expect from Rubin been in previous keynotes talking about how it's going to have petabyte per second of HBM 4E memory, and that's going to be for the more data center side of things, and that's Rubin Ultra, which is going to be the second generation. We don't even have Blackwell Ultra yet, but Rubin entering trial production, potentially making it so that the RTX 60 series is going to be a significant upgrade over what we currently have with the 50 series, because it's actually going to be changing things under the hood architecturally. And one of the big changes that they're actually going to be adopting is chiplet manufacturing. Manufacturing. So this is something that they haven't had in their GPUs up until this point, but something that AMD has been having success with in their products, both CPU and GPU wise. And now Nvidia is looking to implement that into their RTX 60 series, as well as everything else for the data center for all those Rubin chips and whatever they happen to be named. Let me know if this 
excites you? Are you uh, interested in holding out for the 60 series? It's likely not gonna happen until late next year if I had to guess, especially with it just now entering trial production, but I'm keen to hear what you think of it down below. We're also expecting an AMD to come out with some big upgrades. They're supposed to be fusing their RDNA architecture and their cDNA architecture into uDNA in this next generation update. So there's gonna be big changes happening for multiple companies. We'll see what happens with Intel. We'll see if they still have a consumer GPU department by the time they get around to Celestial. And I'm gonna get around to what you said in yesterday's episode of Hot News. We got Obligated4 saying that my biggest hope for all the Xbox Windows crossover is that it carries over to desktop versions. The game mode switch should do everything they're doing on the handhelds. I mean, that's the hope. And that's kind of the indication that was given around the initial launch of the Xbox Ally, or at least the announcement of it. Most people who had behind the scenes knowledge were saying that this is initially going to be coming to the Xbox Ally, but these are gonna be platform changes that will be available to regular consumers on Windows 11. Who knows how long that's gonna take. It took them forever to give the Copilot Plus green light to other PCs out of the Snapdragon, Qualcomm Elite chips that were rolled out, even though basically any RTX GPU qualifies for everything that Copilot Plus supports. So we'll see how long it takes, but I, I agree with the hope and theoretically it should be something that is happening. And then we got Feltron saying, hey, do you guys remember a time when there was no UFD tech on Mondays? No, me either. Uh, I mean, I missed how many episodes last week? We, you were due for a, for a new one, and so uh, I made sure to get it done. Especially, there's just a lot going on behind the scenes, personally, um, that's made it tricky for uh, me to get an episode out on time all of the time. So I'm trying to make up for it where I can, and uh, hopefully, things get way more consistent once this move is done. That's the hope and goal, and I'm gonna use the door as my goal. I'm gonna. Touchdown.